This wreath is brought to you by Hobby Lobby. So let's make the perfect spring wreath. I know I have two wreaths here, but one is for a more elegant style and the other is a little bit more traditional. But either way, they're super easy to make and you can get all the supplies at your local Hobby Lobby or even online. So make sure to watch this video, stay till the end and let me know which one is your favorite. So let's make something beautiful together. All right, so the first wreath we're gonna do today is a little bit of a, a twist on these beaded um, wreaths that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I got these from actually in the back of the store in the wood pile section. And what I love about this is that um, they do put this stuff on sale 40% off, uh, off of products $4.99 and above, which both of these were, so that fits really great with working on a budget here. And I picked up some ribbon, a center. This is a styrofoam. You can use a square if you'd rather, but this is what I picked up. And then uh, these flowers. The florals at Hobby Lobby are just amazing. So I don't know if we'll use them all, but I just love the richness of them. But the first step that we're gonna take is we're gonna take this up a notch. I'm gonna take this foil metallic gold um, spray paint that I got at Hobby Lobby in the spray paint section in the back. I'm going to spray these. So I'm gonna go spray the front of them, let them dry, and then spray the back of them. And then we'll come back together and we'll start putting it together. Okay, so we went from natural wood to this beautiful gold color, and I just love the way it turned out. I am in Michigan, and of course I had to spray paint this in my basement. I would not recommend that um, because it's just, it's rainy and it's cold outside, so I wasn't able to do it in my garage like I had intended, but um, eventually Michigan will catch up. So we're going to do something a little different now. This happens to me all the time. I go into this, the Hobby Lobby and I always think, oh, one thing, and then I come home and I kind of redo it in my head. So originally we were gonna put the wreath frames like this and we were gonna connect them. I'm sure you've seen this similar wreath before, but I got it in my head that we are gonna try something different here, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna have it kind of at an angle, like the smaller one is sitting on the bigger wreath form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of wire and we are gonna start attaching this. So one of the things that you need to know about me is that you should always have wire on hand when you craft with me. You should always have some certain things of Hobby Lobby, like I have standard Hobby Lobby greenery in my craft studio all the time because you never know when you're gonna need it. So I have that on hand. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna twist it and then you're just gonna start wrapping it in between these um, beads and connecting them. And we're gonna go up as far as we need to to make sure that this all stays good and tight. We also are gonna add some glue so that this isn't gonna go anywhere. So it'll be a little bit more structured when you put it on. And I'm pulling that pretty, pretty good. Also gonna add a little bit of glue here and there. I don't wanna get it on my kind of just connecting them. Okay, so as you can see, I put some glue, we have wire, it's, it's gonna stay, okay? So when it's up on the wall, it's gonna stay. Now, I'm gonna take one of these half sphere, I think these are like three inches or um, three and a half inches or four inches, I don't know. It'll be in the description box. Everything that you find here um, for these projects will be in the description box and you can go shop online at Hobby Lobby or go to your local Hobby Lobby and pick up it all. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna kind of put this kind of like in between off to the side here, but I'm gonna take a 22 gauge wire that um, you can get them, they're like sticks of wire. I'm gonna see if this goes through. We might have to do something a little different. We'll see, I'm gonna like feed it through there. There we go, yep, it went through. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here and push it through. So there we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is before I'm not going to pull that all the way through, I'm going to put some glue underneath of it so that we create a barrier and I'm going to let that dry. So figure out where you want it. And then I'm going to just lay some glue on this. I'm going to set it down right there. And then I'm going to tie it around. I 
and then I got glue everywhere. <laughs> That's okay, we'll clean it up. So I'm gonna add a little bit more glue under here, make it a little bit tighter, and then we'll let that set up. Okay, so this is where the fun starts and it's putting all the florals and everything that we wanna put on here. Now, the last time I was at um, Hobby Lobby, I found one of these Shore Bonder mini glue pots that they have, they're $9.99. Highly would recommend it if you don't have the bigger um, Sure Bonder glue pot that I get from Hobby Lobby as well. Um, but this is a great fix if you don't want to um, get the big one. So I'm just gonna take this. I don't know if that's, it kind of has an eucalyptus look. I wish I knew the, the names of these a little bit better, but I'm just gonna cut some here and we're probably just gonna use one bush here and we're gonna add this as our base. Now, remember, when I talk about um, florals, you don't have to um, be a florist to make something beautiful. Hobby Lobby makes it so easy with all their beautiful florals and their greenery. It's just this one right here in particular is just a staple. So all I'm gonna do is just like stick my pick down in there and I'm gonna start adding these to this sphere here. So I'm gonna, whatever I do on this side, I'm gonna do on this side. I'm gonna kind of mimic it. With this, I just saw these blues, and I don't know about you, but I feel like blues have really made a great comeback. And I'm gonna cut this in such a way that we use every little bit that we can use. So this is pretty much, that's a really big one. I'm gonna like cut this one and cut, trim this just a little bit more. I'm gonna stick it in there. And we're just gonna put it down into There we go. I'm gonna kind of have it sitting off the side there. You can also take your scissors and you can like take a pair of scissors like these. Let me find some. And you can just like make a thing to go a little bit deeper in there. Is that a little bit more glue? And we're just gonna do that. So all you're gonna do is take all the different things that you have and you're gonna just start putting them together. Let's put another flower, a few of these. This is the bigger one. Everything will be listed below for you. Let's put it right in there. I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna make one right here. going to move this to the side a little bit because <laughs> I don't want to get glue all over my stuff here. Oh, so pretty. And you can just fill it with whatever you want. If this is not your thing, go to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Fine. There's so much to choose from. There really truly is. You're not limited to any color, um, any season. They have it for everything. So that's what I love the most about being able to go to Hobby Lobby and just find whatever I need. So we've got these really pretty, like they're kind of white and I don't know what you call them, but they're just so pretty. I like to deconstruct things. So we're just gonna deconstruct it and then start putting it in. Originally, I was going to put ribbon on it, do a bow, but honestly, I kind of feel like the ribbon takes away from the beauty of the gold spray painted wooden beads and the beauty of the flower. So I'm going to leave it like it is, guys. I'm going to call it a day on this one, but I think it's beautiful. If you don't want to hang it from the actual beads, you can always um, grab some of that twine I always use and just make a loop up there. But let me show you the other wreath as well. 
Okay, so for this wreath, when you think of spring, what do you think of? I think of gardens and I think of bumblebees. So, and this is a great wreath that'll take you through the summer as well. So you get two seasons in one, which is always a win in my book. And what I love about this is that if you wanna keep it on the smaller side, I'm kind of making kind of a medium sized wreath. Um, you can do that if you want to take it up a notch. Um, Hobby Lobby has a 16-inch wreath form that this would work beautifully on. You would use the same products. You would need more burlap, maybe a little bit more ribbon, but it would turn out beautifully. So just kind of use this as a recipe to make a, a bigger wreath if you want because Hobby Lobby has the supplies. So what I do, okay, this is me. I roam the aisles at Hobby Lobby. And why do I roam the aisles at Hobby Lobby? Because I always t tend to find things that aren't meant for maybe a wreath or a craft and I incorporate them into it. So one of the things that I did was there were some end caps in the back of my store and they had all these really cute like little bumblebee signs and bumblebee um, uh, little decorative things, but they were for like a tear tray. And I just had this thought, I need to do a tear tray with all things from um, Hobby Lobby because tear trays are very popular right now. But I saw this sign, that was a win. Be sweet and bumble, I love it. It's the perfect size for this wreath. And if you wanted to use it on a bigger wreath, it'd be beautiful on that too. But then this is what got, got me guys. You get six in a pack and this was, let's see, it was $9.99 and of course 40% off. So literally these were a dollar a piece. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna incorporate these into our wreath. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get out this um, Buffalo check um, white and black plaid um, burlap that Hobby Lobby has had for years now and has. All right, so this has always been one of my go-to um, burlaps that I love to use. It just has a really nice finish on it. And the weave is a little bit tighter than your normal, like natural color burlap. So I really love this. I've done this um, technique on another wreath. So we're gonna incorporate that into here. But what all you're gonna do is you're gonna take some zip ties, okay? Or if you like pipe cleaners, use pipe cleaners. It's really up to you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're going to start it off by um, gathering it here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna work on the inside of our wreath. So we're gonna work here and what, when you look at your wreath form, you have bar one, two, three, four, or backwards, whatever. But we're going to work with the inside bar bar frames here. So this one, bar four, and bar three, I'm just going to take a zip tie and go under each one of those. And I'm going to start our wreath off like this. Okay. And then I'm going to cut that off. So this is really simple technique. Anybody can do this, so don't get intimidated. If you can count then you're gonna be good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our rotary mat here and we are going to take about seven inches and I'm gonna take another gather and I'm gonna put it right beside the other frame, the other place that we connected. And I'm going to connect this. So we're gonna do seven inch loops. You can do bigger if you're like doing a bigger um, wreath and you just want it to be bigger, you can do bigger loops. It's really up to you, but I'm going to use roughly seven inches. So we're going to do this. We're going to just move this over and it's going to create this little um, bubble that we're looking for. So again, I'm going to look and go to seven inches. I'm going to gather it like so. And I'm going to take my zip tie and I'm going under both of those wires not just the one, but both of them. That's really kind of key here because we don't want to see any of our frame. So let's see how many loops we're gonna need per section. Now, I always show you guys, we go off per section. So this wreath has six sections here. So let's see how many, we're gonna push that in. Let's do another one. We're gonna do four per section. So you're gonna go around, keep doing the same thing, count seven, inches for your length here. Oops, I can't see it. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do the outside of this wreath form. Okay, 
so we've got the first round done. So now let's do the second round because we want to make this look as full as possible. So I ended it right here, but we still have a little bit more. So I'm not going to waste this. I'm going to use this. So instead of just cutting it right there, I'm going to go to here and make another loop the same size, about seven inches. And I'm going to just take it. And now we're going to do the first two sections and I'm going to show you here in a moment what I'm talking about kind of doing this blind here <laughs> so um, this is really simple to do so what we're going to do is we're going to do that so as you can see so the inside of this wreath we did these two so now we're going to work on the outside section we're going to put four loops on each section just like we did let's see uh, that's not quite enough this will make a little bit let's see I don't know, this is not quite enough, but let's just do it anyway and see. We're gonna just try it. See if we can make it work. And then we're gonna start another piece. All right, and before I put this all the way in, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my other roll and I'm going to gather it and slide it right through that one same zip tie here, okay? There we go. And then that way we're not wasting anything. So again, four loops on the outside and then we'll fluff it up and make it look pretty. It's really easy to do, guys. at the end of it so I wanted to show you I'm gonna put one more loop here because I can and because I have plenty so two of these rolls will be perfect for a um, 12 inch wreath form and they even have 10 inch wreath forms too so you can make this smaller bigger whatever you want they they can make it happen I would think if you did um, oh if you did the the 16 inch I would probably have four rolls on hand you'll probably use about three and a half is my guess so I'm just gonna put one more loop in there because we can and then I'm gonna cut this off and then we'll be back and we're gonna fluff it so when you're done with putting it all together you're just gonna shape your wreath whatever way you like now like I said if you want to do bigger loops so that you can have um, bigger um, bubbles that's the only way I can describe this is these are little burlap bubbles, <laughs> but it's really up to you, but you're going to kind of play around with it. So before we go on with this, we have to prep our little bumblebees and our sign. So let me show you how we're going to do that. Okay. So for the bumblebees first, you can do it one of two different ways. You can take a pie cleaner. I don't have any black. I thought I did, but I get them at Hobby Lobby in the back section of the arts and crafts section. And you could take some felt. And if you don't have one of these, um, uh, you know, stapler guns. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this on like that. It doesn't go all the way in. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to put some drops of glue. Now I really like the, um, Gorilla glue sticks that I get at Hobby Lobby. I just feel like it just does a little bit better in all different kinds of weather, but that's how you're going to um, set these up and then we're going to let those dry. Okay, so let's put this bumblebee over there and then we're going to do something very similar. We're going to keep the little rope on because I don't really want to have two holes in my sign. So we're just going to keep that accent and we're going to work on this section right here. I'm going to take my pipe cleaner or you can take wire. It really is up to you what you want to use. There we go. That's much better. And again, put a little bit of glue there to help anchor it. Again, this Gorilla Glue that you can get at Hobby Lobby is really great for that. It's for um, high temp weather, low temp weather. It's just a really good glue. And then you're just gonna do it on the other side. Okay, so all that's left to do is to put on our sign. So you're really just gonna find the spot that you wanna do it. I think I'm gonna put one a sign here and then I'm gonna put a bow up here. Take your, um, uh, wire or your Chanel stems, whatever you want to use here. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to go through the wreath form here. And this is how we're going to anchor it down. 
All right, you're gonna just tie it really nice. Maybe go underneath one just to kind of anchor it to the top to give it a little bit more support, but that's all there is to it, okay? And then I'm gonna poke these through and then I'm gonna do the same over here. We're gonna make it go through the frame, play with the little burlap bubbles you got there. And then you're just gonna take your bees and you're gonna put them out throughout wherever you want to put them. And again, just connect them into your wreath frame somehow and twist them on, have fun with it and put as many or as few as that you want. So I'm just gonna put as many as I want here and then we're gonna make a bow for our wreath. All right, grab a couple zip ties and grab the ribbon of your choice. I use these two ribbons because I thought it would be a really pretty contrast to our wreath here. Again, these came in the regular ribbon section at Hobby Lobby and remember to go when it's 40% off. It's a great time to go. All right, so we're gonna do is we're going to start off with a 10 inch um, tail here and I just take it and I, I gather it, okay? And we're gonna do a 10 inch loop, all right? What does that mean? It means I'm 10 inches from the right hand to 10 inches from the left hand and I bring it together, okay? That's loop one. We're gonna do this three more times, okay? 10 inches, gather, I'm gonna bring it back to the middle here and you're just gonna hold on to it. 10 inches again, come back to the middle, make sure that your loops are facing the right way. 10 inches again and we're gonna come back to the middle. Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut another 10 inch, about a 10 inch tail, okay? So we're gonna take that. So that was the principle of 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches, all right? Take a zip tie, take a wire, take a pipe cleaner, whatever it is that you have on hand. I just tend to do the pipe cleaners or the, not the pipe cleaners, Julie, the zip ties because they're just a little bit easier and it's just a little bit handier. And I call this my zip tie bow. It's pretty simple. So we've got the base of our bow here, okay? Okay, so take another 10 inches here just for just to have a good enough amount because we're gonna trim that down. Now we're gonna do nine inches. We're gonna come to the middle and we're gonna do nine inches again. Come to the middle, all right? I will fluff this out in a moment. I'm gonna do this two more times. That's all there is to it, guys. It's that simple, all right? I'm gonna cut about 10 inches off here. I'm gonna take it, put it over top of the bow that I've created. And this time, I'm gonna take one of these Chanel stems because it's the right color, or a black one would be nice too. And I'm just going to take it and I'm gonna twist it around. Now, if you have some jute, like string, I always have some on hand that I get from Hobby Lobby. I might just take that and wrap it around. Let's see what I got here. That middle and add a little bit more burlap feel. Okay, and then I'm just going to tie that off and then we're gonna put our bow on our wreath. All right, so when you get your bow all fluffed out, I decided to cut these tails pretty short. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna do it at an angle because I don't want the ribbons to get in the way of our sign or our bumblebees. So here's the thing. When you make a wreath, there's always a weak point in your wreath. And that's generally the, the place that you start. So that's right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this little guy down because I wanna make sure that we can see him. And we're gonna just take our pipe cleaner here and we are gonna put it in the spot that we started. You're gonna go on one side of the wreath frame and then on the other, and then you're just going to tie it on the back here. You're gonna twist it. I'm not gonna do it too tight because I don't wanna sink it down into our wreath too much. We want it to be really pretty. And then this way, we're not gonna lose the, the fact that we have these beautiful little bees. And I have one more bee that I can add in, but honestly, I kinda of like where we're doing. I might add one right there. But isn't that simple? It's so easy to do. Don't be afraid to do it. This is like, if you can count, if you can measure, you can make this wreath. It's that simple. I mean, could we get more polar opposite? We've got two wreaths, two totally different ideas, more casual, more fancy, more romantic, and more for every day. So whether or not you like this style or this style, you guys can find something at Hobby Lobby to make and I can help you make it. So 
if you love this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But listen, in the comments below, leave me a flower if you like the flower wreath or leave me a bumblebee if you like the bumblebee or leave me both. So until we get back next time here on YouTube, thank you Hobby Lobby for sponsoring this video. I had so much fun creating these wreaths. Until next time, we'll see you in Julie's Wreath Boutique. Bye-bye.